Hey guys, Super Silverstone here. Welcome back to another video. Today, we're going to be starting our adventure into plugin development for Minecraft. Now, when you hear plugin development, you might get a little bit scared, but that is okay. I haven't even fully learned Java yet, but I still want to teach you some of the things and some of the basics and continue to share with all of you new things that I learned. So to do this, first, you want to download this software named IntelliJ. This piece of software is literally amazing for plugin development. So you're going to head to this site, linked in the description, jetbrains.com slash idea slash download, and you're going to download it. I would use the community edition because it's free, and you can run the Java programs which we need. It can also run Kotlin, but we're not going to be using Kotlin. So download it for your version. Once you finish installing it through the installation wizard, you should get a pop-up window similar to mine. On the left side, click the button that says plugins, and go to the marketplace tab if you're not already there. Type in Minecraft development, and click the green install button. You may need to reload IntelliJ for it to take into effect. Now head back to the Project tab. On the left side of the screen, select Minecraft. You'll get a list of different Minecraft versions and select Paper. You can use another one, but I recommend Paper as it works best. We're going to be doing this in Maven, so we need a Group ID and an Artifact ID. These are just different ways of registering your plugin. Uh, for Group ID, unless you have a website, just type in me.yourname. Basically, Group ID are the authors of the project. You can also enter in a website backwards, doing com.yourwebsite, but most of you won't be using that for right now. For Artifact ID, we're going to be giving a custom name to your project. There are a bunch of fancy things that you can't do and weird rules. They're on screen now. There's probably more that I haven't thought of, so make it as simple as you can. So input both of those, and you can leave the version as is, or you can change it, and make sure that in the bottom right, Maven is selected not Gradle. It's Autumn's Maven, so it should already be there. Next, you can fill in any further information, or you can leave it as is. I would make your plugin name have no spaces, as that is a common problem people have when building their problems. Not building their problems. <laughs> For project name, type in whatever you want and where it will be stored. For now, you're finished with IntelliJ. So now we need to create a free Minecraft server. So, to make the server, go to the site linked in the description, which is getbucket.org slash download slash spigot, and download the spigot.jar for your Minecraft version. I'm using 1.19.1 in all of this, you need to select your version. Select the yellow download button, and download it onto your desktop. Along with that, on your desktop, create a folder to house all of your server files. Make sure to put the spigot jar inside of that folder. So in this, you can use build tools, which is another way that you can do this, uh, and it's a way that Spigot set up to get the Spigot jar. I don't recommend using it uh, because it's just a lot of work. As you can see me scrolling here, it is just a bunch of work. I don't really recommend doing it, um, so I'm not going to be using build tools. I just use the get bucket site, which is not official, but it's still a decent site to use for any of this. So this site will also be linked in the description, but this is a Spigot installation site. So we're going to go inside of our folder, and we're going to add a new text document file. Right here, we're going to name it uh, start.bat. Now we're not going to change it to .bat right now because we still want to edit it, so just name it start.txt, and then you're going to copy and paste this code, which will be linked in the description. You can also just copy and paste it from the description, and you're going to put it inside of that text document file. So on the inside, there's going to be these two hashtag spots. You're going to replace that with the amount of RAM, not RAM memory, that you want to be able to give the game. I recommend three gigabytes because that usually works for most plugins, uh, and you can put whatever you want there. So just replace those hashtags. So once we do that, we're going to rename it to the start.bat, start.bat, and then you're going to run it. So you're going to run the uh, server file, not the .bat. You're going to run the jar file, and you're going to start seeing these folders pop in. And so you're going to let it run until you see the file eula.txt. So once you see that file, you know that it's completed. All right? You can see right now eula.txt, and you're going to open that up. So here we can see we have the file, and you're going to double click it to open it up. And then you're going to see eula equals false. We're going to change that to eula equals true. And that's basically telling Mojang, hey, this actually works. I see that the ela and I agree with the eula. However, you do need to click on the jar again, uh, double click on it to run it again, and it will continue adding files. And you'll see the rest of the files appear momentarily. 
So as you can see, it did continue adding files, and now we have this little pop-up right here, and this is our console. So the console is where we're going to be able to access tons of information and be able to see what's going on in the game. So this is going to be logging everything that's going on in the game, as well as you can see in our server file, we have a ton of files that have popped up, including the plugins folder. We're going to get to that in a second. So now you can see that we have our login and everything right there. So now you're good to go. Whenever you load um, the start.bat, that's one way to do it, or you can just load the server.jar, and you can also access the server properties right here through the server properties section and uh, add your key if you want the start.bat to work. So now we're going to close out all of that and we're going to go into IntelliJ IDEA for the final step, which is the build artifacts. So we're going to go in here and this is our file space. We can do whatever we want here. And now we're going to go to the top left and we're going to go to file and then go to project structure. And then on the left side, we see the artifacts button and then click that. And then there's going to be a jar button. Click that which is the plus button under jar. And then you're also going to see from modules to dependencies. So you're gonna click that. And then you're gonna get this other little pop-up and click okay. Now you're going to take this little output directory and you're going to output that to your plugins folder. So you're gonna to go to your desktop or wherever you have it saved and you're gonna put link this to your plugins folder. So that whenever we run the reload command in Minecraft, we will be able to get the plugin sent directly to our uh, server. So when you're finished with all of that, you're going to click apply and then okay. And I would go back up to file project structure and double check that you actually have it all set up in there because it might not have saved properly. So go back and double check. Next, we're gonna go up to the top left and click file settings. And then we're going to go to the little search bar at the top and we're gonna type in artifacts. You can do build artifacts or artifacts, whatever. We just need artifacts in there. And what will most likely come up, as we'll see in a second, is the build artifacts, right? And that should be set to nothing right now. However, you wanna right click it and select um, it to be saved as a key. Mine is F5, I recommend F5, uh, that's what I use. So now we're actually finished. If you click F5, everything should work. Okay, everything did not work, but now it does work. When you click F5, you can go and you can see build and rebuild. If it did not work, just go back, double check and make sure that it actually saved. That's why I mentioned that before it doesn't always do that. So now you are finished with everything. You have your on enable and your on disable. And now all we have to do is just boot up Minecraft and our Minecraft server. Also, one more thing, uh, make sure that you run that. So for it to actually be there, you'll see on the left how in our folder, in our plugins folder, it's actually saved inside of the folder. We need to make sure that it's there. So to do that, go over your plugins, not your plugins, your IntelliJ, and click build just like I did there, and that will move it over there or rebuild. So that will build it the first time, and then after that, you're gonna click rebuild. Just like that, and then it will update in your folder for everything present. Okay, so I have set up everything. Now, if you go into Minecraft and you go into Direct Connect and go to local host, it should work. Now, make sure that your plugin server the Minecraft server itself is also up by going to the .jar file and activating it, the spigot 1.19.1 uh, jar, and double clicking on it. That will bring up that console window. And then you can go to Direct Connect in Minecraft and go to Local Host, and you can actually launch your Minecraft server. And it works. You're in game, you can op yourself, and you can do slash plugins, and your plugin should be green and golden. Beautiful. Look at that. You have just created your own Minecraft plugin just like that. So, that is how you do it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, make sure to leave a like, subscribe to the bell to turn on those notifications, go down to the comments and leave a comment. I really appreciate you guys supporting me uh, through all of this fun, fun, fun stuff. Uh, remember, you don't need to know Java for this to work, because uh, we're going to go through it one step at a time. So, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys next time. Goodbye, everyone.